Now that you've got fixed wing flight down, let's move on to the reverse maneuver. But first, what is a reverse maneuver? The reverse maneuver is defined as a way of transitioning from fixed wing flight to hover fighting in such a way that you turn around to face someone on your tail after burning at the last second in order for the momentum to carry you backwards. There are actually a lot of ways to do the reverse maneuver, some of which are as easy as stopping and holding your pitch down key. It's imperative, however, that you learn the most difficult and complicated reverse maneuver you can. Why? Because the reverse maneuver is an evasive maneuver. You're using it when someone's on your tail, shooting at you. The more weird dips and turns you can throw in, the harder you are to lead. Therefore, you should think of there being tiers of reverse maneuver. A low tier maneuver is easy to learn and easy to lead, and a high tier maneuver is hard to learn and hard to lead, and hopefully fast too. I personally believe that everyone should be taught a high tier maneuver straight from the get go, so that's what this video is going to be. If you want maneuvers that are a bit easier to learn, there are other resources uh, on this on YouTube, and I put some links to them in the description. Just be sure to check back here once you're more comfortable. Okay, now that you know what the reverse maneuver is, let's get into actually learning it. I teach the reverse maneuver as a three-step process, in which step one is what you first do upon starting the maneuver, step two is what you do for the first 90 degrees of the turn, and step three is what you do for the last 90 degrees of the turn. Remember that the reverse maneuver is a 180 degree turn that allows you to turn on the person behind you, and it's also a transition from fixed wing flight to hover. When practicing on your own, you should remember to start the maneuver at full throttle flying fixed wing, and learn to finish facing, eventually, the 180 degree opposite direction with your thrusters locked. That said, let's dive into the aforementioned steps themselves. Step one of the maneuver is easy. Stop with your throttle analog key and roll 90 degrees in your preferred direction. The direction you choose will dictate which way you end up completing the maneuver. Almost everyone learned the maneuver choosing to roll right during step one, and for now I want you to do the same so I can more easily dictate what buttons to press. You should eventually learn to turn both ways though for the sake of reversing around terrain. Step two is where things get a bit more complicated. First, pitch down continuously at max speed using your mouse. You are actually going to do this for the rest of the maneuver without stopping, so be sure you've reviewed the sensitivity issue in the previous video if you're having trouble. The second thing we're going to do during step two is hold our D, as in dog, D key. You may notice that this will pull your ESF down towards the ground. We don't want this though. Our biggest goal during step two is keeping our ESF parallel to the ground despite that downwards pull. The way you do this is by rolling upside down slightly to offset the pull of the yaw. If you're having trouble, just try continuously performing step two in circles using your pitch down key, uh, doing everything you can to keep your ESF level. Keep practicing until uh, you can easily pull off step two and consistently keep your ESF parallel to the ground because in step three, we're going to completely turn step two on its head. Well, before we were trying to keep our ESF parallel to the ground, we're now going to change what we're doing. Point your ESF towards the sky and take a second to notice what happens to your thrusters. You should see that they begin to lock or point down very quickly as opposed to regular flight when they're unlocked or pointing behind you. This is a very important concept that's going to be expressed more thoroughly in future videos, but for now, just understand that pointing your ESF straight up lets you lock your thrusters more quickly. This is the entire principle behind step three. Our goal with step three is to break the whole parallel to the ground thing, to try to get ourselves facing towards, towards the sky as quickly as possible because we want our thrusters to lock so we can stop getting shot and start afterburning backwards. Don't worry too much about the afterburner yet though. For now, start step three at the 90 degree mark by doing two things. First, switch your yaw direction from D to A so that your yaw starts pulling you up towards the sky. Second, over roll upside down just a little bit more than you already were in step two. There is actually a window here between too much and not enough roll. You'll know you've given it enough roll if you end up pointing at least partially upwards. Remember to do all of this while continuing to pitch down. Now that we're pointed towards the sky, all that's left to do is finish the maneuver facing the person on your tail. You do this by rolling your ESF all the way back to normal as you continue to pitch down, ending the maneuver. To practice, try starting the reverse maneuver flying north and finish flying south, or get a buddy in VR and have them follow you around doing your best to finish facing them. 
Once you have all the motions down, keep practicing the maneuver until it's locked into muscle memory. Once you're ready to put on the finishing touches, do the maneuver again holding spacebar the entire time and hitting afterburner as soon as your thrusters lock during step three. Congrats! Here's some continuous footage of reverse maneuvers to close out the video. Good luck.